as if I needed a reason to fucking hate Canada more. Now, look, I know that not all Canadians are a bunch of fucking special snowflakes, but my God, of all the stupid shit that could come out of a country, why, why does it always come out of Canada? It's just a phenomenon. Somebody could make a lot of money researching. Is it an inferiority complex being so close to the United States, which is so awesome in so many ways that you're just like, you find the dumbest shit to try to feel proud about. I don't know. But today's news comes from the Toronto star. Yeah. That's a, a fucking great name, Star. There's nothing star, no star qualities about this bullshit newspaper. So, this article written by Emma Title, yeah, more like Emma Entitled, a national com, com, uh, columnist for the Toronto Star. Apparently she's an award-winning columnist, though I don't know if it's a participation award or what kind of an award. But, uh, her article written on uh, March 19th, so uh, yesterday there, wherever the hell you happen to be, um, is probably the, the worst written article I've ever seen. And we're going to go through this here together and uh, enjoy the idiocy. And we'll make some comments as we go through here. So it begins <laughs> on March 5th. A man named Adil Kayani went to the bathroom on an airplane traveling from Marrakesh to Manchester. He was on the toilet for about 10 minutes, he told British newspaper The Independent, when he heard a knock at the door. He told the knocker, a flight attendant, that he'd be out soon, but he didn't get a chance to emerge on his own terms. Instead, the flight attendant forced a way into the lavatory on the suspicion Kayani believes that he was up to no good. Now, he just believed that. He has no evidence. He just thinks, ah, they just, they just came in. He says, I feel completely violated, the 35-year-old Muslim of Pakistani heritage told the newspaper about the incident. I think it's racial discrimination. They can see the color of my skin. Yeah, through the door, they can see the color of your skin. All these flight attendants now, they have amazing x-ray vision, don't you know? It's a standard issue. Meanwhile, according to the Independent, the airline says it was following procedure and flight staff claimed Kayani had been in the bathroom for at least 15 minutes, not 10, hence their concern at subsequent break-in. Okay, policy is policy, especially in post 9-11 world, policy is policy. All right, did they maybe exercise some, some poor tact? If he actually had said just a moment, I wasn't there. Did he do that? People have been known to lie, especially when they can make some money off of an airline, make some money off of a business. They'll lie. I, I, I just, I can't buy that. But this is, this is her segue into the meat of this story, which is the fucking, I, I, if this woman had any title besides cunt, I would be surprised. But th white privilege is also this, wearing a MAGA hat around town, an accessory that is synonymous with xenophobia and racism, and playing the victim when someone gives you a hard time about it. What the fuck, bitch? In other words, white privilege is thinking you're an oppressed minority because you can't wear a racist symbol without being called racist. Holy fuck, I could strangle you. I could literally s put my hands around your stupid fucking neck and just squeeze until your eyes popped out of your stupid fucking head. A white woman talking about privilege is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard for one. Two, mega, make America great again. Now, I don't care if it's America or whatever country you put in there. There is nothing racist or xenophobic about wanting your country to be great. We should all, regardless of color, regardless of what country you, you come from, we should all strive to be great. We should all strive for our countries to be great. That is the driving force behind 
all of civilization is making or attempting to make your country, your tribe, the best that it can be. Nowhere in that in mega does it denote race. Does it say make white America great again? Okay. It has nothing to do with racism. It's not a symbol of racism. It's a political statement about making your country great. So for this bitch to come out and say, you, oh God, play a victim when someone gives you a hard time about it. Well, what about every time the left plays victim when somebody says, I don't believe in your bullshit pronouns? Nobody mentions that. Nobody, nobody calls them fascist, even though they're being fascist. If you don't, if you don't call me by what I want to be called, I'll send you to jail in New York anyway. You're telling me that's not fascism? You're telling me that that's not privilege? Give me a fucking break. She goes on. I'm certainly no fan of racial profiling, but if there's anyone I'm inherently suspicious of and frankly afraid of in a post-Pittsburgh, post-Christchurch world in a society with a growing white national pro problem, it's definitely not Muslims in the bathroom. A lavatory. It's white men wearing red hats that say make America great again. Wouldn't it be nice for a change if one of those guys was rudely interrupted on the toilet? Well, really, how about the ones that are beaten for wearing that hat? How about the ones that are fired from their jobs, kicked out of school, have their hats taken away and turned over to the police? Did you forget about all those things? Did you forget about people wearing it because they truly believe in the message of making their country great again are demunitized, insulted, spit on, treated like racists when they may not have a racist bone in their body. And she tries to backtrack here. It's total bullshit. She'll, I'm only kidding, of course. No, you're not. I don't believe that mega hat wearing men should be followed into the bathrooms. Yes, you do. But I do think it's perfectly acceptable to give them a hard time about their headgear and to embarrass them in public, especially if they are Canadian. And most especially if they wear their mega hats to a vigil honoring the Muslim victims of an Islamophobic hate crime committed by a white nationalist. First off, he's not a white nationalist. Okay. Everything that came out about it today shows that he was trying, to, he's literally a left side person, a liberal trying to cause a war in the United States, and he figured that this is the way that they would start a war over gun control. Not a white nationalist, not at all. Sorry, sugar tits. And it's not, she says it's perfectly acceptable to give them a hard time about their headgear. Okay, so you don't agree with their political views, and let's say, just for the sake of argument, that MAGA hats are a symbol of racism, like she claims. Well, then, is a burqa or a turban, are these signs, th these are headgear, are these signs that they are, are Islamic terrorists? I don't know. They might be. Maybe that's not their intention, but they could be. So, is it okay to give them a hard time about their headgear and embarrass them in public, especially if they are Canadian? I don't know. If the shoe fits, wear it, bitch. But you won't see that. You'll never see what's good for a goose is good for the fucking gander. You'll always see focus on the right, focus on the white, focus on whatever's easy. Just not those poor, innocent people of color. This week, footage emerged online of a young white man wearing a mega hat at what appears to be a vigil on Toronto's York University campus honoring victims of the New Zealand's mosque shootings. Needless to say, no one in the camera's frame is happy to see him there. In the words of one attendee, there was a fucking massacre, and you're wearing a symbol of racism. Get the fuck out. In keeping with the traditions of his tribe, Mega Hat Guy smirks before he walks away from the crowd, and then someone knocks the hat off his head. Good riddance. That's fucking assault. Someone assaulted him because they didn't like his message. And you say that's good riddance? A crime was committed. If somebody knocked a burqa off a bitch because they didn't like Islam, is that good riddance? 
You smug fucking bitch. Why the United States hasn't fucking rolled into the Canadians and said, you're a part of us now. You've been on your own too long. You can't manage yourself. Welcome to America. We'll do it for you. I don't know. But this kind of shit, and I know it happens here in America. I know it does. But it fucking drives me crazy. It needs to stop. When it's happening in other countries too. Fuck me. Oh, so she goes on. The sad thing about Canadian Trump supporters, assuming this guy is a Canadian and not an American student who actually voted in 2016 Trump or U.S. election, is that they don't even have a horse in the race war they're so amped up about. Maybe that's because it's not a race war, bitch. Maybe he is an American, and maybe he believes that he wants to make his country again, and maybe he just wore that hat because he wants to make his country again and send his message, and maybe he went there to actually mourn the death of people. Maybe he's not racist at all, but I guess we'll never know. Shit. She goes on. They're like fans of an overseas sports team who show up to the pub and complain that their game isn't on the TV. No, bitch. <laughs> not at all. That's a fucking game that has nothing to do with it at all. I don't understand her fucking logic here. I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to follow her, but this woman is so fucking dumb that I'm surprised she doesn't forget to breathe and, and just fall over asphyxiated. To borrow a word from the team's captain, a.k.a. Trump himself. Oh, take that, Trump. They're losers. Oh! Mic drop. Damn, bitch. Sick burn. Whoa, whoa. But then she goes on. But they're also a uniquely scary kind of loser. Because where American Trump supporters can at least claim to appreciate the U.S. president on account of some of his more benign policies while disapproving of his racist rhetoric... I've never seen racist rhetoric from him. There's, there's nothing racist about your country first. So I don't know where she gets that, but whatever. Canadian Trump supporters can't. They're in it for the racist rhetoric because what else have they got? Maybe they want their country to be great too. Maybe they see retards like this journalist and retards like they have leading there and maybe they see it and say, maybe we could have a good leader too. Maybe maybe we could make our country great. Now, I don't know a lot about Canadian history, but I know that back around the World War II and even up to the Afghanistan War, they were a pretty good ally of the United States. But ever since this fucking Trudeau has got in, they uh, have become a massive security risk, if you ask me. Um, and safety risk to the United States. Their unvetted mass importation along our undefended border. Their funding of terrorism, uh, terrorist groups, giving $10 million to a terrorist who was sleep-deprived in Guantanamo Bay. That's it. Sleep-deprived. They gave him $10 million just as a cash settlement So that after he'd killed two U.S. soldiers. Canada, Canada is a massive risk to the United States. And so maybe this guy just wants his country to be great again. Maybe he doesn't like the direction that this country is headed. And he wore a hat. He wore a hat to say, let's make it great again. Fuck. As journalist Sana Saeed put it very well on Twitter this week, Canadians who wear MAGA hats and support Trump terrify me on another level. Their attraction to him isn't policy. He's not their elected leader. It's purely his rhetoric and what he symbolizes as the leader of the white insurgency. What white insurgency? How is it an insurgency if this country is predominantly white, always has been, that makes it the, the, the local populace? So, even if there was this massive racism, white nationalism, is it not originally mostly that way? How is it an insurgency? A terrorist attack? Fucking what? 
and their attraction to him isn't policy? Why not? Why not? Why can't other countries have policies that we like? Why can't fucking Britain have a policy that we in the United States would, would like and be attracted to? I'm attracted to free health care that the Canadians have, but I can't be because it's just purely the rhetoric and what it symbolizes. No, bitch. No, a good idea is a good idea. I think free health care for all is a great idea. But apparently, according to this Sana Saeed and this dumb twat writing this article, that can't be a thing. You can only like what happens in your own country. Uh, well, then why are you worrying about what happens in our country? Emma Title. What a fucking snatch. She finishes out. Either way, they're a sad, scary bunch. Stay clear and stay vigilant. Her Twitter handle, at Emma Rose... Roset? Oh, Emma Rose Title. T-I-E-T-E-I-T-E-L. -E -E Why is that so fucking small? I can't read that. It's, it's fucking almost five in the morning, so maybe my eyes aren't working like they should be. But Jesus Christ, this is just unbelievable on a whole other level the smugness and the incorrect bullshit and the assumptions and the total slander of a a massive group of people who just have a different political belief than her to call them scary and sad and a horrible bunch of losers and and an insurgency a white insurgency is just beyond horrible journalism this bitch should be fucking fired she shouldn't be fucking writing the back of a cereal box if you ask me she needs to go and actually see what it's like to actually have a job you know what I'm white so where's my white privilege I, I work my ass off at a full time job all the time hey, I come home I gotta take care of my personal life and in the six or seven hours left that I have at the end of the day that I should be sleeping, I come on here and try to make videos or commentary, whatever, for you guys. Surely I'm living the white privilege dream right there, hey? God, look at that, my millions of dollars and my fleet of fancy exotic cars that I all bought on my white privilege card. Give me a fucking break. Like... This is privilege right here. This woman, this white woman, is showing what privilege actually is. And she's com just completely unaware. Privilege is, is, in today's society anyway, being able to say whatever the fuck you want. Being able to assault someone by smacking a hat off the head because you don't like it. And having zero consequence. Not only zero consequence, but having the fucking crowd applaud you. That, to me, says privilege. And yet she's going to come out here and say they're a white insurgency looking for... And you know what? I know plenty of black dudes. I know plenty of Hispanics who are all mega fans. A good idea. A good political policy. The, the thirst to make things better in your own country is not a racial issue. It's a national issue. That's not a nationalist issue. It's a national issue. That it's it's a message that everyone of every color and every belief system and every sexual orientation, whatever, can get behind. Make your country great again. How you think your country could be great is entirely up to you. But it's very dangerous to assume that simply because somebody wears a hat, his hat didn't have a Nazi symbol on it, okay? His hat didn't have... A white power symbol it didn't have a Ku Klux Klan hood on it or any of that shit so just to assume all of his beliefs when they might just be 100% politically motivated and write a giant article about it Emma title fuck you I'll put uh, I'll put her Twitter link up here guys maybe you should uh, whoever listens maybe drop her an email and let her know what you think of her super awesome article if you're a mega fan, let her know that, you know, you don't have a fucking first clue who we are. 
I'm a mega fan. All right. I am. I am whatever country you are. Make that great. I don't care if you're fucking Mexican. I don't care if you're fucking Swahili. I don't know if that's a place or what it is, but it's a something. Make it great. Why is that not a message that everybody can agree upon and, and just let be? Make it great. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta get some sleep. Thanks for hearing this rant. I gotta stop getting so goddamn upset before I go to bed. I swear to God, because... This kind of shit just amps me up and then I just lay awake for the next 45 minutes to an hour in bed just being like, fuck, I hate her. I hate this crap. Why is this happening? Why can't we all just fucking subscribe to Logic? Speaking of subscribe, throw me a sub if you guys uh, like it. Throw me a like. Throw me a comment. Throw me It all helps. Throw me a dislike. Tell me why I'm a shithead. Tell me whatever. Um, it all helps in the long run. Like I say all the time, if you're going to throw criticism my way, great. Just make it constructive criticism and don't be like, hey, I think you sound like you're a fucking... You're stupid. Okay, but tell me why. Tell me how I can improve. You guys have a great night. Have a good one.